waka 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 what's up and welcome back to the channel for yet another fc finch transformers review a third party transformers review and we're looking at a toy world product today this is toy world shovel which is their take on a constructicon scrapper i'm not exactly gonna say masterpiece because i'm not sure if this was ever marketed exactly as that even though it will perfectly scale with your masterpiece especially in the robot mode as we'll get to that a little later in the review uh, but i don't exactly want to call it out as a masterpiece just yet. Uh, so I want to give a preface as to why I'm doing this review. Uh, we, As you've seen, we have quite a few Devastators on the way. The Devastator Wars have begun yet again. We have x Transplants. They just released their big load, which I will not be getting in on. We have the Fans Toys. They're releasing their version of Scrapper in about June, I believe. And then, of course, we have the mastermind creations excuse me releasing their version almost had a brain fart right there and we've also had the new age of festus that was recently released within the past two years the magic square had a legend scale one and of course a studio 86 series was just announced a couple weeks ago so the devastator wars are back on uh, this has been about a this has been about a almost seven year dead uh, uh game here and now they are back so but i just wanted to kind of take a look at what was previously the benchmark Devastator to have, or at least one of them. We had this and the Jin Bao, which I believe is a knockoff, oversized knockoff of the Generation Toy or the NBK, whichever one, I forget. So please, feel free to correct me in the comments. But these two were previously the benchmarks to have. And I just want to kind of want to take a look at where we're at. And in about a couple years, we'll see where we're actually going with this new line of Devastators coming out. So just kind of take a look back here. Now, I did buy this in the box set. This came in the box sets, the TWC07X, which I believe is their perfect edition whatever that means it's toy world as we're gonna see so uh, we'll find out whatever that means but this did come in a box set it did come packed in combiner mode incidentally which kind of lets you know how toy world expects most of the people to display this uh it's straight straight to devastator with you so either way um but we are going to be taking a look at each robot each mode and each component now i'm going to save the box for the actual combiner review which will happen in about six or seven weeks whenever i get to this we'll do this at a nice leisurely pace but I do want to take a look at the instruction booklet. And of course, you do have Toy World. It says CW07X on there, Constructor. And then, of course, it says Toy World on top. You get a nice picture of Constructor, which is their take on Devastator uh, demolishing a city. You got smoke in the background. He's firing a big pink blast from his cannon. He's got his drill hand out. And uh, you can see on the back, it just kind of finishes up the diorama. And it has some administrative messages in Chinese symbols, I do believe. I'm guessing because it says made in China on the back. And then, of course, we'll take a quick look at his instruction uh, booklet, if I can find out. It's right after allocator. And, of course, there it is. And there are just pictorial instructions, uh, which uh, for most of these guys, the transformations are not difficult. You just have to be really careful, as we're going to find over the course of these reviews. As you can see, it says shovel along the top. And it just kind of gives you some information here in pictures on there. For those who like to look at the pictures like me, because I personally can't read but nevertheless and of course he does come with his collector card which is in the back of the book and you can see it's a very nice animation of the toy world stylized shovel on there twc 5 x is his nomenclature it says shovel right there it's hard to see in purple and it says toy world right along the top and then of course it has his graph o stats on the back so you can see where he stands and that is about it for the card so let's get into the leg boat. And again, this is exactly how he's packed. I'll show the clamshell during the combiner uh, video and I'll have them all in the clamshell. But he came packed pretty much in his combined mode. I think very little needed to be done to get him uh, fully in this mode. But you can see it's basically him doing a headstand as is typical for Scrapper in combined mode. I'm not going to go into the details just yet. I'll save that for the tractor mode, which we will get into very shortly, or the front end loader mode uh, to be 100% percent precise uh but we will just kind of take a look and uh he does have a little bit of articulation in this mode so he does have a, a foot swivel which is basically his waist swivel and uh he does also have a uh heel or a tilt little teapot tilt from side to side it is quite substantial and it is nice and beefy to get you a few poses and that is about it for his 
articulation in this mode. And just to give you a scale measure, and I didn't transform any of my MMCs uh, because quite frankly, we already know that they're going to be smaller than this anyway. And I really don't have any other combiners just yet that are at about this scale. So they're on the way, uh, but not just yet. But either way, we'll get a scale measurement. And he's about eight inches tall uh, to basically the top. So you can already see he's going to be a pretty big lower leg. And uh, there we go for his combiner mode. So let's get Mr. Shovel transforming up into his front end loader mode. And overall, this is a pretty simple transformation, as are most of these transformations. Uh, but uh, we'll get into it. Toy World does have a few issues with tolerances and some things being over tight. So we are going to take our time with this one. Uh, so the first thing we want to do is you just kind of take okay, his rear tire, and we're just going to kind of push it back and down. And you'll see it just kind of comes down just like that. And then what we're going to do is we are going to untab this right here. You might want to get a fingernail in there. And you see it's just a slot right here that tabs in right here. And you're just going to kind of fold this over just like this and then you're going to bring it up just like this and then what you want to do is you want to untab uh the upper arm right here you can see it tabs in right into here just like this and you're just going to kind of bring that around you got a slot right up here you have a tab right up here the tab is going to go into here and this slot is going to receive this tab right here which you previously uh undid and you're just going to kind of put that in there just like this lock it in just like that and you can lock this in and just kind of make sure everything is sitting nice and straight and push this in all the way and it's going to be the same thing on the other side i will do that off camera so now you have shovel basically sitting like this and we can move this out of the way just temporarily and you can see that the shovel kind of tabs in right along here and you just kind of want to work the shovel or the bucket i should say off right on there and then you can kind of just what i like to do is mine is extraordinarily tight on this hinge so i just want to work it kind of out uh just very gently just kind of work it out just like that and again it's kind of hard to show just because i'm trying to be gentle at the same time and you just want to want to bring this down and then you could put this back up we just did that to give us some space and like magic there is shovel or scrapper as we should say in his front end loader mode and let me get him kind of there there he goes nice and straightened up and let's take a look at his front end loader mode and for the most part he is unpainted he has done an unpainted vibrant green and purple i'm actually not in Entirely turned off by this. I think the color is more than suitable for him. And it does, it really stands out. Like it for just unpainted plastic, this really pops. Like I really get the Constructicon vibe with this. But you can see he does come with a bunch of painted accents all over. He comes with some yellow conduit right here uh, towards the front of the vehicle. And then of course the midsection of the vehicle. And then you can see he's got some black conduit, some black vent detail towards where the engine would be. You can see on the back, he's got a little bit of red painted in there on black plastic just more molded detail right back there and you can see as we go down to the wheels he's got some shock detail done in silver that is a really nice touch especially when you won't see that and then a little bit of piping right there and then if you move on to right here the center of the vehicle he's got some uh black venting detail and a few other detailing right here the wheels are done in a gray plastic and you see they got the lug nut detail and i really do like that and the tires are rubber and they are in a nice very beefy off roadie feel big enough beefy he will roll extremely nicely uh you can see the front end is basically his chestial area again that's typical scrapper so what do you want and if you look on the bottom I mean, basically scrapper scrunched up and lying down which what do you want it is what it is but you do got a little bit of red detail down here we'll go over that in robot mode since that's what's that for uh but you got some rib detail on the upper canopy you do got some red lights as well that look really good and of course you have some hydraulic uh detailing right here done in silver it looks Looks very good the bucket has some nice ridges and uh, these are sharp by the way so uh do watch it when you do get to transforming this guy because uh you may cut yourself i of course did right here when playing with this guy last night so just be advised about that uh, but that's pretty much now as far as vehicle mode goes uh you can move the canopy back and forth the top canopy moves this moves back and forth if you want i'm normally just keep this up and the shovel moves on a hinge here a hinge here and a hinge here this one has been extraordinarily tight but you can get the bucket up like this you can move it up just like this to get a variety of poses and there we go for that as far as accessories go uh he does come with the devastator chest plate i mean it comes in the box 
box with all the Devastator components, but this is the what the instructions actually say that he should come with. Of course, the faux Decepticon symbol on there, courtesy of myself, that does not come with the figure. And uh, you can actually mount this guy a la the G1 toy. It does have these two ports right on the back here. And of course, you have two plugs right on here, and you can actually put this out just like this. kind of get it in there it does it, it's not like it doesn't like plug in all the way but I mean it will be tight on there and you can kind of carry that around you can kind of give him the winged look uh similar to the G1 toy so he can become the most undynamic flying vehicle uh, or an aerodynamic flying vehicle ever but it is what it is and of course this looks as ridiculous as any weapon or component storage in vehicle mode he does also come with his rifle done in black plastic with a little bit of red accent inside here now it, the instructions say that you can mount this here but i've watched the mgo review and uh, this is a screw hole and uh yeah same story with mine in fact let me try and get it in uh here it doesn't even go in here either so uh yeah uh it Fake news uh, from the instructions. Uh, this will not be mounted on to Scrapper in his vehicle mode, What I'm more than okay with. I am okay to leave this in the box because uh, you know how I feel about having guns mounted in vehicle mode. And one last but least, we'll take his little uh, back plate off and we'll just bring in our typical mode of comparison. We'll bring in Mr. MP18 Streak right here so you can see how they compare together. And uh, this is actually kind of believable. I mean, it's a front end loader versus a car and uh, i mean this does look more than believable to me and uh this scale right here and you can actually put mr streak in the bucket and he could haul that autobot off to the junker and that is basically going to be it for the vehicle mode so let's get mr shovel transforming up into his robot mode and once again this transformation is overall pretty easy hampered only by the tightness of this joint right here so we're going to be very careful uh but it's just a little bit of a longer version than the previous mode so let's get right to it i'm gonna move this back give us some room to work with and we're just gonna kind of put his shovel uh back in the previous mode that it was already in and i'm just gonna kind of bend down on this here you kind of want that this gap to kind of close and this is gonna kind of close up just like that you can kind of see they're all lined up and then you can just kind of push the shovel back on these two tabs right here it'll just tap in just like that we can kind of leave the canopy up and that'll be just fine and we can leave this just like this and next up what we want to do is we are going going to untab the arm and it helps if you untab it right along here then we're going to untab it from here as well and we can kind of bring this out and what we want to do is uh you see you have this hinge right here you're going to kind of move it back on this hinge. i'm trying to think of the best way to show this you're going to move it back on this hinge and you're going to see it's kind of got a rail to move on what you want to do is you just want to move it up that rail so now the arm is sitting here just like this and then what you want to do is you have this little mechanism and you can actually close this and so mine is extremely tight uh but you can actually close this up and you can see that this kind of closes up the gap right there and adds in a little extra molded detail now the arm can't go down and you just kind of situate it right back in here if you so desire and next up what we're going to do is we're going to open this up and we are going to flip out the hand and spin that and then we can close this up it's just going to tab in right into a tab right along here and you can see we have one arm all done and it's going to be the same thing on the other side i'm gonna do that off camera i'll be right back so now we basically have him looking like this uh with an arm with it's a couple of arms with no legs and uh yes this band-aid is from me transforming this off camera um th this is typical with this set so this one was just too tight and i just kind of used a sponger to get it in and of course like i nicked my hand my finger on the plastic and this is a typical story uh with this set and if you've seen already reviews of this of things being too tight and they're tight in different places and not everything is the same on each set uh yeah that's that, that's toy world uh quality for you so either way uh the show must go on so what we're going to do next is we're going to unplug this right here we're going to unt it just tabs in right into here just like this and we're going to bring it around you can see it's got a slot on the back and this is going to tab right into here so it's going to bring it around and we're just going to tab it right into here now what we want to do is we can split the legs and we're going to open up this right here it opens up on this hinge right here just kind of leave it like this and you're just going to kind of want to fold we can 
spring, we can kind of fold this out just like this. And you can see it comes with this tab. You just want to take this and you just kind of want to fold it all the way back on this hinge right here to give ourselves plenty of room. You can see we've got the whole leg right in there. And we're just going to start to flip this around. You're going to want to give yourself as much room as possible. Flip the leg around and just bring it all the way down on that nice ratchety hinge. Then what we want to do in the foot, you just fold the toe out if you so desire. And what we want to do next is we can first off bring this around just like this and this will go in here this will go in here actually bring the toe down and then we can kind of get that in there and then you could close this up right here it'll just lock in right there and then what you want to do is you see you got the tab here that you used before you are going to wrap this around there is your slot right there and you're just going to kind of bring this in and you're going to finish off uh the toe look and that pretty much fills everything out pretty nicely and that is one leg all entirely done so we'll just do this side uh just so i can make sure everything is clear and uh, we will open this up bring it down you're just going to kind of bring it around and set it right there just like that and then what you want to do is you want to come in and you want to open up this right here and then you could bring this out and just kind of bring this out just like this and bring it up and then just kind of bring it around and you can give yourself some space and just bring the foot all the way down you kind of want to avoid that tab right there and the foot will probably unfold itself or the toe i mean and you can also bring this down just a bit give yourself some room to work bring this around and just kind of put this in there just like that and you want to wrap this around and then you got a, the slot right here and it'll go into the tab right there and then you can close this up and lock it in just like that and uh, that will have his legs done and lastly but not leastly uh, what we can do is we can open up his chest plate right here and you can just flip out the head and it'll lock back into this little catch right here and then you can just lock in the chest plate just like this and like magic there we have toy world shovel aka scrapper in his robot mode so let's talk about Scrapper in robot mode. And uh, overall, uh, I think this looks absolutely solid, Oma. Um, uh, this is basically him. I mean, yes, he does say he is a bit bulky on the proportions, but I actually don't mind that. I think that is actually a cool liberty of Toy World to take. And we kind of know that this is already designed more to accommodate the combiner. So I'm honestly okay with uh, that liberty taken. We'll get it on the head. And you can see the head is a very Scrapper head. He's got the nice mask painted in silver. He does have a nice uh, clear red for that nice ruby red and you can see on the back it is light piped uh so we can hold on let me see if i can get the light in there and uh we can kind of yeah, that's about as good as it's going to get without wasting too much time on it. Uh, but you can see he's got some purple clear plastic on the chest here. It looks really, really good. Overall, uh, mostly purple plastic on the chest. He does have some nice molded details painted out in black. Got a little red on the chest area and some venting detail right here. Uh, the waist also done in molded plastic. Lots of molded detail all over this guy. Got some nice red right here. Uh, you can see you got a little bit of molded detail now on the legs. This covered up just nicely to make it look a little different and uh then of course we moved on you can see basically the whole back of the tractor on his lower calf um just like that uh the arms of course done in a lot of nice molded detail all around looks really really good moving on to the back and it's basically it's a typical scrapper back with the whole bucket uh, on his back and then of course the whole back of the tractor and you can see the legs have covered themselves up very nicely uh, just like that in fact the only real gap is in the foot here which you're never gonna see i love how this kind of wrapped around and these legs kind of fill themselves in that looks really really good and we'll move on to his articulation real quick so the head um it does it is just on a swivel it can go all the way around it can look up the slightest bit and it can look down just a little bit pretty much straight on for the most part the arms are on kind of a hinge right here so you do got kind of a hinge you can work out and kind of get a butterfly which is really cool uh you can move that out just like this you can also rotate them around you got to watch out for the shovel but it'll rotate all the way around and 
uh, just like that. So that is pretty cool. He does have a bicep swivel and he does have a ratcheted elbow, which gets you a just slightly over 90. Actually, it probably is basically 90. Um, the wrist will rotate all the way around just due to the nature. In fact, if you don't lock it in, it will go up and down. Um, the fingers are on an individual, I believe it is an individual ball joint at the base. So they do kind of, they will go all the way around. They will kind of splay out the slightest bit, but they're just on that individual ball joint. Same thing with the thumb. It's on an individual ball joint at the base as well. Move his arms out so we can get his uh, waist swivel. He does come with that. No ab crunch to speak of. And if we move up the, he does have front and back waist guard. So we can move those up and he will get you a nice blocky fusion kick. Just very slightly shy of one. You can move it back and you have to move it out to avoid the canopy to get a fusion back kick. And of course, out to the side for that fusion side kick. All on, I believe, a universal, which is not bad. It does hold very well. He will hold that just nicely. Ratcheted. He does get you a knee bend, but of course it is blocked by this. He can open this up to get more, but you're not supposed to. So that's about all he can get for his knee. And uh, he also does have a thigh swivel, which is very nice. And the toe, his toe will tilt. It will also tilt on this mechanism as well. It will get a heel tilt and he will get an ankle tilt to each side for a variety of good poises. Really good how that ankle joint works. And that is pretty much it for his articulation. Oh, uh, and one more, we'll do his accessories, and he does come with one more accessory. The only accessory that you get for robot mode is, of course, his gun, which we already discussed, done in molded detail. It's actually pretty cool. You know, it's not the typical dull, uh, bland G1 styling. It does have a little bit of style to it, which I think is really cool. And, of course, you can see he's got slots in the gun, and he does have uh, little tabs in his hand. You can plug that in and he will hold that uh, pretty firmly, uh, just like that. And he will, that'll be just fine. So he can have his gun right there and he can fire on some Autobots. And uh, honestly, that is pretty much it for his accessories. And for a few quick comparisons, so we'll first get him in here with MP52 or the newest iteration of Masterpiece Starscream so you can see how he looks. And uh, he's basically, I mean, he is pretty much Masterpiece size. Uh, Starscream's one of the bigger bots and uh, he is pretty much on par with Starscream. In fact, a little bit taller, uh, if you, <laughs> a little bit taller uh, to the top of the head, I do believe. So uh, there we go for that. We'll move Starscream out of here. We'll get him in with one more tall bot. We him in with a third party bullet bring in the fans toys acoustic wave so you can see how that look at acoustic wave of course crouch down uh, but even acoustic wave uh you know in this position he is about on par with that so he'll probably be oh just under half an inch or maybe an inch smaller than acoustic wave which is okay by me and last but not least let's put him front and center we'll bring in some other leg bots from uh combiners which end up being smaller and you can see he towers these are similar leg box that he towers over ocular max navigate and Ocular Max uh, Frodo right there. Uh, they're uh, Streetwise and they're Swindle. So uh, they're pretty cool about that. We already know this is going to be a bigger combiner, but it's just cool to kind of see how in robot mode he's pretty much, I mean, even if we were stand-up Navigant tall, uh, he'd be still be taller than Navigant. So you can already see he's a pretty towering dude uh, for what he is. So uh, again, not to, not, not overall officially stated as masterpiece, as you can see, he pretty much fits the role. So there we go for comparisons. So let's summarize, and there we have it for the Toy World Shovel, their masterpiece size-ish take on a Constructicon scrapper, the team leader, and the first entry, well, my personal first entry into the Constructor set, which is going to be their Devastator, or which is their Devastator, I should say. This set has been around for a while, and overall, I honestly think in robot mode, uh, this figure still stands up. This figure uh, by itself still stands up. Yes, it is bulky. You can see it, especially in the lower legs. It makes sacrifices for the combiner, but I honestly don't mind the proportions. I think it kind of gives it that kind of cross between the slavish G1 tune accurate and the more robotic feel. Um, I do like a lot of the molded details. Uh, yes, it's not 100% painted, but it is does use vibrant colors for the plastics as you would expect the Constructicons to. 
Uh, does have the rubber tires, which is a big premium uh, plus point as far as this figure goes. And again, just a lot of molded detail. It does look really, really good. And it poses like a champ. I actually do like a lot of the choices for the joints that they use. I think they work out really well. And the articulation, you get just a variety of poses despite its bulky stature. Uh, that being said, uh, transformation is simple, but there are a lot of tight joints. And this is just a na the nature of the beast with Toy World. Uh, their issues are not all linear. And if you've seen one Toy World review, you've seen them all. Uh, stuff that's tight in one review may not be tight for somebody else in another, but uh, they all do have their fair share of issues. And I do recall uh, per Emgo's video, uh, there was actually a few sites that didn't want to sell this set due to their issues. And it's just something you kind of learn to live with with this set. There is a payoff. I will tell you there is a payoff, but we're going to get to that as the reviews go on. Uh, but overall, just be advised that if you do get it on this, you will have your share of issues. I don't want you to go into that blind. Uh, that being said, as far as where to get this, the set has been out for almost a decade now. So uh, check eBay. You might want to check with Dan Yu at Botsman Zone see if he can get his hands on one for you. But of course, if you decide this is the set you want, just maybe wait a year or two and you might see these go on sale. You might be able to get this cheaper than I did with somebody else trying to offload this to get a new set. This, of course, will be my Devastator still, even with the new sets coming out. And I'm more than happy to have it like that, as we will see in the videos. And that being said, that is going to include this review. So if you found my video fun and informative, hit that like button down below. I greatly appreciate it. Also, if you're not yet subscribed, I implore you to subscribe to my channel. We are almost at 500, and I greatly appreciate those of you who are already subscribed. You can definitely subscribe for more content. Check out more of my third-party videos. I'll put links in the description down below. Uh, and that is about it for this review. I have been FC Finch. Thank you so much for watching. Good night.